The film opens with a young boy sitting on a dinner table all alone while his face is covered with blood. The scene then changes and we are introduced to a couple named Kathy and Todd. Todd has been creating a comic book for a few years and all of his comics have been popular. His comics are about an evil doer called Slasherman who was an actual murderer 20 years ago. He committed a few heinous crimes and the police never caught him. So Todd made a comic book about him in which Slasherman never stopped hurting people. He explains to Kathy that this comic has been up for a long time. And now he wants to end it but he is unable to come up with a proper ending. The one he presents to Kathy is bad so he throws it in the trash and claims that he will try to come up with a new ending. After that, as both of them start talking, it is revealed that in order to help clear his mind and find some inspiration for a perfect ending, he has planned a road trip to his hometown where Slasherman first started hurting people. But he has also invited his publisher, Ezra, and his assistant, Aurora. They are also heading there to announce the launch of their final issue on a radio show and talk more about it. As they get into the car together, Aurora starts to look at a map while also driving. Just as they are talking with each other and cracking jokes, Aurora almost hits a car because she is looking at the map instead of the road. The car they almost hit is a full black truck so they can't see who is inside. Which is why Kathy stops Todd once he tries to go over and talk to the person driving. All of them panic a little. But the black car drives away as the accident was nothing serious. Relieved, all four of them do not take this seriously and decide to continue their journey. As they are about to go, a house on the side of the road catches Todd's attention as he keeps staring at it like he personally knows the place. After this, they stop at a gas station where they can use the toilet and fill up their car tank. As all four of them walk out, they see a strange man who is the owner of the gas station. Here, we learn that Kathy is working on a book that involves asking people questions so she starts talking to the man. As she asks him a few questions, Todd and Ezra go inside the shop while Aurora goes to use the bathroom. Inside the shop, Todd and Ezra are shocked to learn that it is an old place and almost nothing there is edible. They also notice an empty stall of comic books, so they stack it up with their Slasherman comics for free. Meanwhile, Aurora is outside sitting right next to a dog that was seemingly strangled by metal wires. Kathy goes close to her, only to see that she is drawing the deceased dog, which Kathy finds a bit odd until Aurora explains herself. She claims that Todd told her to draw every horrible thing she sees that can be a part of the comic and if she sees something bad she should not get it out of her head until she draws it. Kathy understands and also talks about her own book, which is about the true story behind Slasherman and not fiction, like Todd's comics. She also shows Aurora pictures of the real Slasherman's victims, who are from this town and she is asking local people questions so that she can write it all in her book. The victims involve a little girl and a single mother, who was the first victim, and she passed away on Christmas at her dinner table. Both of them now head back to the car as Todd and Ezra also finish putting up their comics for free. Then, all four of them reach the radio show, but the radio host named, Gary, is only interviewing Todd and the other three can only listen. Gary starts off normally and asks basic questions that Todd is happy to answer but things get heated in no time. When asked, Todd explains that Slasherman believed that he was creating art and all the bodies he was leaving were grotesque sculptures to him, which is why Todd took interest in him. Gary points out that his comic creates an extremely toxic culture that promotes and idolizes violence since every page is filled with gore. However, Todd explains that he in no way wants to promote violence even though his comic is filled with it. He further adds that if a person has the urge to hurt someone after reading his comics then that means that the person was a psychopath to begin with, who would have found other sources that triggered those urges. As they are talking, a mysterious tall man walks inside the gas station shop and starts looking at the Slasherman comics. On the radio show, Todd mentions that Slasherman had a purpose, but Gary pulls out the picture of the little girl he and claims that doing that to a little girl is not art. Gary also assumes that Todd might have a personal connection with Slasherman, since he gave him a welder's mask and truck in the comic. To this, Todd mentions that he gave him all these things in the comic because he felt a strange connection to them. He then leaves the show without answering further questions. But as he is about to leave, Gary calls him back and says that they are getting a call. Todd listens to it and there is a man who says some numbers in a strange voice. Todd is weirdly disturbed by all of this so all four of them leave. After this, three friends named Hannah, Megan, and Adam get in their car so they can get home. As they are joking and laughing around in their car, it starts to rain and they can barely see while driving. As Hannah keeps driving, they hit something and have to stop the car. After fighting over who will get wet in the rain and check what they hit, Hannah gets out of the car and sees that their tire is punctured and comes back screaming, because none of them know how to change a tire. As they are panicking, a car comes and stops right behind them and they think that they should get out and ask for help. All three of them come out of the car and they see that the other car is a black truck which is the same one Todd and the others were about to hit earlier. Suddenly, a man wearing a welder mask comes out of the car and all three of them get freaked out by the way the man is looking. Without making it look obvious, they start making excuses and claim that they already called their friends so they don't need his help anymore. As the masked man keeps insisting, all three of them go back inside their car and start panicking even more because something is wrong. Apparently, he is wearing a welder helmet which the real Slasherman did not wear, 
but the slasherman in the comics war. As he firmly grabs a knife, he opens the door and starts to jab at him in a sewing machine motion and he keeps stabbing him countless times until he passes away. Meanwhile, Megan opens the door and tries to run away, but Slasherman also stabs her on the thigh as she gets out of the car and tries to crawl away in vain. The scene changes, and we now see Todd again who is trying to come up with an ending, but is distracted trying to figure out what the man on the call meant by the numbers. As he is working on it, Kathy walks in with good news. She claims that her book might become something big, because she just got a call from a big company in New York that wants to interview her. While she is thrilled to attend this interview, Todd's response is not the same. He does not seem excited, and Kathy feels a little bad because this is life-changing news for her, but he's not even happy. Things start to heat up as both of them start to argue, because Todd claims that he is going through something that even he can't explain, which is why he just cannot be happy for someone else. However, Kathy is also unable to understand why he is behaving like this and gets angry as well and both of them keep arguing. As the scene changes, we learn that they need to go and meet some fans and answer their questions. As all four of them are going in their car, they go by the crime scene committed by the slasherman and it looks oddly familiar to one of the scenes Todd put in his comics. Shocked and startled, they think that someone is copying the murders from Todd's comics. A little scared, they still go to meet their fans. Once there, Aurora points to the elephant in the room and asks why the scene they just saw is similar to the one in Todd's comic. Azra also agrees that it looks very similar but Todd says that he thought of a thousand ways to hurt people in his comic and that it can be a coincidence that one murder in real life matches his comic. After this, a fan comes there and he starts talking about how much he loves his work, so Todd feels like he is creating psychopaths with his comic. Just then, he receives a call again, where a man mutters some numbers once again, leaving Todd startled. As he tries to get away from there, he gets a cut on his hand which also happened in his comic already. All of them are then in their hotel rooms again as Todd and Ezra are talking about what they should do. Ezra claims that they should just go and tell the cops everything because they are innocent and have not done anything. However, Todd claims that he wants to get away from the cops because the murder was based on his comic, and that could also lead to them getting in trouble. Ezra still thinks they should tell the cops in the morning, and Todd also expresses that he needs to think about all of this and then make a decision. Confused, he is walking away from Ezra's room when he gets startled by Aurora, who talks to him for a while before leaving. Todd then meets Kathy and immediately apologizes for the argument they had and emphasizes that he is unable to grasp what is happening to him, adding how he just feels weird about all of this. She understands this and tells him that it is okay to feel this way, so then he goes to their room while she stays outside for a while. Curious, Todd is sitting inside his room, as he is still trying to figure out what the numbers mean because he notices that this time, the man said different numbers. He starts to look in the Bible for answers while Aurora is sitting outside, drawing some disturbing images for the comic. As she is sitting there all alone, we see that the black truck is parked nearby meaning that Slasherman is here. He emerges from the shadows and starts to choke Aurora from the back, and she tries to fight for her life up until the point where he snaps her neck and throws her down. Everyone else is sleeping at that time so no one is able to hear this happening. In the morning, police sirens wake up Todd and Kathy as both of them go out to check what's going on. Traumatized, they see the severed head of Aurora on the ground as the police clear the scene. They all are called to the station for interrogation where Todd doesn't say much, and the rest are crying because their friend just passed away. They show Ezra how Aurora passed away and even though deeply disturbed, he points out that Todd drew this. He claims that someone else passed away the same way in his comic, meaning that someone is definitely copying Todd's comic book. Kathy is also asked similar questions but after everything, they are free to go home. Before leaving, Kathy expresses how all of this is Todd's fault because their friends perished due to what came out of his head. She further adds that Todd indeed promotes violence and evil, and he is also slowly acknowledging this fact because all of them are in danger now. After this, all of them are in sorrow because they lost Aurora and they are going somewhere in a car. While they are talking, Todd gets perplexed because he is getting a call from Aurora. Both of them ask what is happening, but he just picks up the call, only to hear a man saying more numbers. Todd and the rest are even more confused now as Todd pulls out the Bible and explains that he is trying to connect the dots, but as he is explaining this, he looks at his comics and realizes something. The numbers were meant for the chapter of the comics. He checks the chapters and sees the connection. Frightened by this, Todd tells him the third number and Ezra ends up on a page with a whole family falling victim to the slasherman. Scared, Ezra points out that there is a family right ahead of them, meaning that he is also around and is about to end the family's lives. They go near the family and tell them to pull up, but the family gets scared thinking that Todd and the others are bad people so the family does not stop and goes away. As they watch, the same black truck comes right in front of the family and blocks their way. Slasherman comes out of the car. Todd sees his welder mask, and he gets a flashback of his childhood where he sees a similar-looking mask on a man. Kathy then notices that he has a gun, and as Todd calls the cops, Slasherman shoots the family one by one. He then notices Todd's car and pulls out a bigger gun. As they try to drive away, he keeps shooting their car and they almost get away, but in the end, he manages to shoot the car and it crashes. Todd now wakes up, only to see that Kathy is in dire condition, while Ezra has brutally passed away. Todd tries to wake up Kathy, but Slasherman comes and pulls her out of the car while Todd pleads for mercy. 
He pulls both of them out and puts them in handcuffs as Todd again has weird flashbacks from his memory. Slasherman puts all three of them in his truck and goes away. Later on, Todd and Kathy wake up right next to the body of Ezra. Both of them start to talk and as Todd mentions that he will get them out of there, Kathy makes it extremely clear that she has accepted her fate and that she will pass away today. She further elucidates that she does not want to go away in a panic and fear, but wants to pass in peace right by the love of her life. Todd understands this, but explains that he will not pass away without trying to escape, so he comes up with a plan. The scene then changes as we see Slasherman's face for the first time, and he is sitting in his living room where we can see countless Slasherman comic books on the floor. Then, he takes a look at a picture of a crime scene that is clearly drawn by a small child. Slasherman then wears his helmet and goes to check on Todd and Kathy. But when he opens the truck, Todd jumps on him while giving Kathy a chance to run away. As Kathy keeps running away, he starts to shoot at her and ultimately hits her on the thigh so she can't go far. As he talks with Todd and says more numbers, Kathy manages to get out of there. But just as she is about to call for help, she runs into a tree and a pointy branch goes right inside her shoulder. Knowing that this is her only chance at escaping, she bravely pulls out the branch from her shoulder and while enduring the pain, tries to run towards the place where she can hear a police siren. As a glimmer of hope shines on her, it is snatched away as Slasherman comes out of nowhere and tackles her down. As he has her held down, he starts to hit her with his helmet and ends her life. Meanwhile, Todd walks inside his house, and after trying to call the cops he finds his comics everywhere. Then, he sees that picture drawn by a little kid on the man's table. That picture instantly reminds Todd of everything that has happened to him and all the flashbacks that he has been having. Everything is clear to him now as he knows why he even created this comic in the first place. As he relives this horrific memory again. We see Todd as a little kid at a dinner table on Christmas Eve. As he is happily living his life with his single mother, he sees that a man came to their door. Todd instantly remembers the man's face and it is the face of a man he saw earlier as he was welding something. As the man was welding, he saw Todd and his mother and instantly locked his target. Todd also knew that there was something eerie about the man when he looked at him, which is why he remembered his face. Todd's mother used to visit the church frequently and we see that as he is at church with his mother, the same man is also sitting there looking at them. The man is pretending to film the church while he is also secretly filming Todd and his mother. As Todd remembers all of this, he sees the man forcefully coming inside his house and pushing his mother away. Then, he pulls out a knife and as the mother looks at Todd one last time, he hits her in the head with the knife. Since all of this is too much to handle for a small child, he closes his eyes and is unable to grasp the fact that all of this is actually happening. He starts to draw on a paper and since he remembers the man as a welder, he gives him a welder mask in the picture as he is standing over his mother's body with a bloodied knife. This is also why he gave him a welder helmet in his comics, because deep down he remembered all of this. Slasherman now comes closer to Todd and puts blood on his face as he takes the picture, because he likes the way Todd drew it. After that, he realizes that he has to give his art meaning and since his mother was frequent in church, he puts her back on the table and he ties up her hands with a rope, making it look like she is praying. He then closes her eyes as Todd keeps staring at her, while being terminally for his entire life by another man's art. Now, the adult Todd sits in his memory and cries once again, but realizes that Slasherman must be in his old house, the one that Todd was staring at the start of the movie after they almost hit Slasherman's truck. Todd somehow makes it to the house and sees that his guess is right, because Slasherman's truck is parked outside, but it is empty, meaning that he took all the bodies inside the house. Todd opens the door and walks inside. He sees that the entire house is again lit up, just like it would be on Christmas Eve, but this time, all of the lighting is accompanied by blood and intestine. Horrified by the very sight of this, Todd walks further, only to see that Kathy, Aurora, and Ezra are sitting at the dinner table. Aurora is obviously headless while Ezra has also passed away because of the accident, but Kathy is tied up just like Todd's mother. Todd runs to her, only to be heartbroken and exceedingly devastated to see that her guts are already out, meaning that Slasherman has already taken her life as well. As Todd takes a look around the table, he sees that Slasherman is sitting there as well, with blood all over his face. Todd is now traumatized, to the point where he has gone non-verbal because he lacks the mental capacity to form words. Slasherman then gets up and comes closer to him as he starts to explain everything. According to him, he was about to end Todd's life as well when he was a child but that drawing changed his mind. He knew that Todd saw something in him that no one else did. Todd saw the artistic side behind all these random acts of violence. He spared Todd's life because he showed who he was supposed to be and what he was supposed to do. He also mentions that he has been keeping up with Todd's comic since the first chapter came out and he was happy to see that someone is carrying his work. He stopped because of Todd, but he saw that Todd had no ending to this beautiful story, so he decided to step in once again and help him find one. He further explains that Todd inspired him, and he inspired Todd to let the pen flow and create true art, which comes by inflicting pain on others. As Todd is still speechless and mourning the passing away of the love of his life, the man now offers the ending as he pulls out a knife. He hands him the knife and tells Todd how all that is left to do is to put in the last piece and let the whole world see. This means that Todd now has to murder him to complete this beautiful art piece and finally put an end to all of this. Todd takes the knife and jabs it in him twice ultimately pulling it out and slicing his throat. 
As the man falls on the floor, he bleeds out knowing that his life's work is now complete and someone else will be inspired by his art. As he expires, Todd's heart and mind are still shattered so he picks up a candle and throws it on the Christmas tree. It immediately catches fire and Todd again starts to mourn over the loss of Kathy because she was the only one he ever truly cared for. As the entire house burns down in flames with Todd and the others inside, the movie ends.